Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Can I welcome you to the 2011 British Limousine National Open Day? And can I introduce you to our host for the day, Craig Ridley? I'd like to welcome you all to Hawcliffe. It's a great honour for us as a family to be asked to host this event. And it's fantastic to see so many friendly faces and familiar faces around the farm. Although thanks usually happen at the end of an event, I would like to thank a few now, without whose help this would never have happened. Firstly, our stocksman Kevin Bates who's, uh, and his wife Rachel. I'm sure Rachel hardly knows what he looks like because he's, he's almost been here 24-7 for the last two weeks. Then Giles Pyman again, very similar to Kevin, just been constantly here trying to get things organised. And Andrew Cox from Hutz Girls, and I'm sure there's been very little work done at Hutz Girls in this last week. And there's quite a lot more that I won't mention, but they know who they are, and without their help, you know, this event wouldn't have been as good as, well, the farm wouldn't have been looking as good as it is at the moment anyways. So today we have cattle in the sheds, with the wool sheds to look at, there's the stockgen. The cattle and sheep up the top shed, the swell layers down across there. We have uh, Texas, four, five groups of Texas in the fields you can look at. There's some sale cattle along the road if you're interested. And uh, you have lunches here provided by Pioneer. The stock Stockjigin, it's sponsored by United Auctions, and all the contributions to that go to charities. So I hope you'll uh, support them well, please. Then, and mostly, I would like to welcome and thank Louis de Nervier. Louis has been a f great friend of the family for the last 30 years. Affectionately known as we call him King Louis, because he's the, what we call the King of the Limousine Breed. And I'm sure if he'd been born in England, he would have now been Sir Louis. He's been involved with limousines for over 50 years. He's introduced the breed to 64 different countries. He was involved with the limousines coming to the UK with the late Jack Burdell in 1970. And he tells me he's 81. Well, I know he's 81 because he's the same age as Dad. But he's got the mind and the forward-lookingness of a 21-year-old. <laughs> so, thank you for coming, Larry. So, again, just welcome to Hopecliffe, and I'll pass you over to Jim Bloom, who will say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Um, ladies and gentlemen, can I say uh, a welcome today, here today, at the home of this great Holtcliffe Limousine Herd, and offer thanks to the Ridley family, not only from the British Limousine Cattle Society, but also yourselves, and including many international visitors. I would also like to say a thank you to all the sponsors who have helped and contributed to today. The British limousine story is a truly remarkable one. From a standing start 40 years ago, the enthusiasm and foresight of those early pioneers with their first imports, and it is pleasing to say that some of those same people are here today, but this breed would not only have reached the status of the most popular terminal beef sire, it completely dominates the UK commercial beef industry with 32% of all beef calves sired by a limousine bull, more than the two nearest rival breeds put together. But this, but also it is reliably estimated that 75%, three quarters of all commercial suckler cows carry a large percentage of limousine blood. How has this limousine breed, very largely unknown to most of the British industry 40 years ago achieved so much in such a short period. Simply, it suits most situations, be it a breeder, feeder or finisher. It ticks all the boxes that the beef producers want. It's easy carved with good growth rate, easy fleshed with good confirmation. It dies well with good meat yield and fine grain tender beef. This fact is proven by limousines winning almost every steak tasting competition. 
It suits the farmer and the retailer equally well. It is economical and profitable. The British Limousine Cattle Society are embarking and investing a considerable sum of money over the next few years in conjunction with the Scottish Agricultural Colleges and Anglo Beef Producers to look at ways of improving carcass genetics. We also have a much longer term plan to investigate the possibility of measuring and improving feed conversion efficiency. The marketplace has changed during the last 40 years and continues to change. Both the butchers, retailers and commercial producers have demanded more muscle and more manageable carcass weights while maintaining all the breed attributes. And you, the breeders, have accepted and adapted to these changes. This is our marketplace. We must never lose sight of the fact that the profit of the commercial beef farmer is our future profit and livelihood. This has been so profoundly demonstrated here at Hopcliffe. The Ridley family quickly recognised the strengths of the limousine breed and the potential it offered to the UK industry when establishing their pedigree herd in 1979. Being the stockmen that they are, they were soon reaching the highlights and producing top quality breedy animals for a growing market both pedigree and for the subtler producer. Sadly, what had become some 22, year late, 22 years later, one of the top British herds was totally decimated by foot and mouth disease. Remarkably, and to their extreme credit, the Haltive name has been reborn and is once again achieving tremendous results and producing the highly desirable limousine genetics, which you which we have the pleasure and privilege of viewing today, and I don't think anybody would dispute that. Thank you, Craig and Matt and the family, and all your staff, who are all very much involved with this success story, for the huge effort you have given to make this, pos this day possible. I have said the 40-year British limousine story is remarkable. But the whole limousine story is remarkable. And while, without the effort and determination of one man, Louis de Nerville, the whole breed after the Second World War might have slipped into oblivion. Louis. It's a pleasure to introduce Louis. What a day. Uh, sorry, I don't have any paper. But it's certainly come from my heart. Um, first of all, you all made it. This is how we see that in the world. Leading the pack, thank you Matt and Margaret, thank you Craig and Sheila. Reconstructing a prefix like Holtcliffe is one of those achievements that the world, the limousine world, is fed from, plus the friendship and the intelligence. Um, I don't want to be long. Still, for some of you who didn't know that or may not know that in 1963 the word limousin was ignored except from maybe a professor of the Edinburgh University realize that in 71 when the first limousin landed not the most optimistic breeder in this country would have believed what we are going to see and that we see already now. We are going to see in the future, but I'm going to come back to that. Before that, let me remember a few who come 
to my memories. And I'm going to miss a lot of you that I met and I want to take my hat off. But certainly I want to uh, say that an evening in no November 71 near Shropshire I had a supper at Lynch House with Jack and around a Stilton cheese and a, were, and a glass of port in presence of somebody that may some of you remember Tom Tweddle we started elaborating a few things soon after came a telephone call from Jack telling me Louis we need some money for promotion my answer was sorry Jack we don't have any money no you don't have but we don't have either but we have ideas and maybe between the two of us or the few of you and a few of us we may construct something and the idea came of a society heard. Why? Not, I have to confess, our first intention was to create an event. It had never been done. And we had among our friends Jack Saul from the Farmers Weekly. And then we came, we organized at the Royal Show some heifers to come and that is the story of the society heard which helped the society five or six years later at dispersal when the society needed money this is an example where international cooperation was really part of the history many others Mike and Pete Keeble the Fosters you would have imagined King and Yvonne with their Bentley in the narrow lane of the limousine province. <laughs> it was a shock for us, I guarantee you. And all of that created this wonderful atmosphere. Around this atmosphere we developed this breed. <laughs> what I want to say, because I don't want to be long, is that for the world we have been confronted in one of those countries that have been in some instances we didn't go well not because the limousine cattle but because the speculation here your identity is that every one of you I don't care if it's cat or dogs or horses or what, you have a breeder instinct. And this, with, between the breeder instinct and an exceptional product, I'm talking about the limousine cow, makes the breed success. <coughs> now you have a responsibility in the future. This responsibility is that you are the leaders. Being the leaders, you lead the industry. The reaction between we, people from the ground, breeders, feeders, whatever, and the consumer. That will change. We have too many additives and so on and so on. We have to think, and your future, now that you have mastered the product is what the consumer is going to do with this product and I hope that we are all together together today but together tomorrow for a more brilliant future because it has not yet been done the world over and this 40 years anniversary is incredible for me it's absolutely wonderful to be here thank you for inviting me thank you to Ridley's family for your long friendship and uh, I we, we are going to challenge each other 
in 10 years from now, if I can walk, I will be here. And bravo for what, all what you did. Ladies and gentlemen, can I ask you again just to put your hands together for our three speakers, Craig Ridley, Jim Bloom and Louis De Neville. One or two pieces of housework. Uh, these days are made viable by our sponsors. We have four mainline sponsors for this event and for the limousine weekend. They are Cogen, Crystalix, Hygienity and Harrison Hetherington. So can, can I say a special thank you to them and to all our sponsors and I hope you'll take the time to visit their stands today. I hope many of you also will be able to attend the 2011 National Limousine Show that takes place tomorrow at Borderway Mart, starting at 9 o'clock. I think that's going to be a fantastic follow-up to today with some 300 pedigree cattle and 100 commercial entries. Most of all, can I thank you all for your attendance today and I hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Hello, I'm Nick Munts from Merial Igenity and we're very pleased to sponsor British Limousin Cattle Society 40th anniversary weekend and in particular to support uh, Craig Ridley and uh, Watcliffe Limousin on this their open day. Uh, good morning, uh, my name is Stuart Boothman and I'm an operations manager for Cogent. Uh, Cogent's association with the Limousin Society stems from uh, our custom collection facility uh, and service where we collect, um, house and distribute limousin seamen exclusively for the Limousin Society through Seaman Store. Cogent was created 13 years ago by the Duke of Westminster uh, around his uh, main estate in Cheshire and was uh, put together for the benefit of UK farmers, beef and dairy farmers. Uh, we have a substantial dairy program um, and a substantial beef program. Uh, but this weekend we're here to promote the 40th anniversary of the Limousin Society Main, one of the main sponsors for the event um, and we're more than glad to be here at the Ridleys today um, to promote the breed and to promote our association with the family uh, and the society as a whole. Hello, my name is Roy Firth, I'm a regional manager with Crystalix. We're delighted to be here supporting the Limousin Society again on their 40th anniversary and to be a, a very uh, special firm with the Ridleys showing off some of the most magnificent cattle you could ever see. We hope the day goes well, uh, and we're sure it will. Uh, congratulations to the Limousin Society.